Kelly, and I'm Cass Surek, and Matteo Pescarin. Right, we've been running this for over a year now. I think maybe this is the 13th or something like that, or even more than that. I've lost count already. And the idea is that um, we want to exchange more information about E. We want people to know about the capabilities, the possibilities that uh, E can uh, have with E. And uh, I, I'm seeing some new people here, and E is, yes it is. So this is why we have this acronym here. Uh, and there's naturally a lot of uh, history, or not a hell of a lot of history, because it's rather, rather recent, but there's a reason why this was created. And there's a reason why we're all here, because we believe that we can build things with this particular framework. Right? Um, tonight, the venue here, the beer and the snacks were provided by Digital Linux. I'm the technical director for Digital Linux, and we have Mercedes UK as one of our clients, Massey Ferguson, and especially Mercedes. As some of you would have uh, seen already, we have software running for them using E already. Right? So this gives you an idea of what can be done with it. Um, so Digital Annex is a more digital marketing uh, agency. And we naturally have 50 people here in this office. We naturally have um, a different department that will deal with specific sort of work. Uh, I, I head the technology department, but we naturally have client services, we have insights, insights have been growing uh, quite a bit recently. We have um, project managers, we have as well creative guys, designers, and so forth. So we are growing um, in a very good pace. Now we have around 50, 50 people. And hopefully by the end of the year we'll have maybe a couple dozen more. Right, so if you see our work, um, if you want to see our work, then actually go to our website, digitalenet.co.uk. We've seen this already, right? So um, if you haven't yet connected, please do so. And I just remembered that um, it's good to get you guys perhaps to check into the meetup, take photos if you can. Right, let's get the word out, let's get more nice people here to have some more beers, exchange information, discuss solutions, and etc, etc. Right, I think you know, the, the, the framework deserves this, and I think we, uh, it's great to perhaps provide this sort of uh, framework and help for people that want to do good work and good, develop good applications. So if you have a friend that, uh, in, that has interest in PHP, or, or framework for software development. Bring him around. Bring her around, right? Because uh, we could probably do it with a couple of girls here. So. <laughs> 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 right. so, um, so now what we have in store is um, last session, last month, we were talking about uh, E version 2, and we're going to do that again tonight. I went through the main aspects that uh, I'm going to come up on version 2, and it was a long list, so we decided to split it two. and now we're going to go over the second part of that. Um, we're not going to go into a lot of detail about all of these uh, things, come on in, <laughs> good to see you again. So we're not going to be able to go into a lot of detail of each and every specific um, aspect, new aspect, but this is for you to then have to investigate later on, or we can discuss in more detail later on. This is just for you to understand what's going to be new of version 2. Right, so there are some interesting things um, which you're going to see next. However, this was the proposed order of the evening, but we have the, the very uh, interesting situation in our hands here. Um, that we got in touch with uh, Alex Makarov. He is one of the co-developers for the e framework. And due to the time difference, he's based in uh, Russia. So we want to get a hold of him on Skype. So instead of actually my presentation first and then his chat, 
by the his questions, we'll try to get a hold of him via Skype now. Right? So fingers crossed. Because I'm not entirely sure if the connection is going to be good, the audio is going to be audible, etc. etc. But if it all fails, we have a video with the questions already on the screen, right? So you know it's a it's a error handling in real life, <laughs> even, right? <laughs> Exception handling. Turn it off. Hi, Alex. How are you? Um, sorry. Can you hear me? Can you hear you? I, I can hear you. But you might not be able to hear us. Okay. Can you hear it all? Okay. Let me try to sort it out. You can sing some uh, interesting Russian tunes to a small See whether the audio is going to work here. Input. <laughs> I'm not that worried it's in Europe. <laughs> okay, so maybe you should oh. be able to hear us now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's much better. All right, so great. So we have the, the lights off here, but I'm going to turn them back on just so he can see you guys. Oh, hello. Hello. All right, so let's just get the video going. Oh. Oh, you can see everybody, okay. Cameras, yeah, it's better. <laughs> right, so, it might be good. Let me see whether I can just get the uh, the image on our side here, perhaps slightly better positioned. Right. Can you see people here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello. Right. <laughs> so we have a number of people here, all based in London, developers. Um, we also have for people that work in the recruitment uh, industry as well tonight. All right. So we're all very excited to be in touch with you. And technology <laughs> is indeed a great thing. So I'm going to move you over to the big screen so the, the guys can see you. Great. And then the way that I think this is going to work best is uh, I have a video that I sent you the, the uh, questions, right? Which I have not yet played here. <laughs> okay. But um, we can naturally play that video later on and have those questions answered. Um, before, after that, uh, uh, the, the list of questions that I sent you, uh, some of the guys here sent some additional questions, uh, oh. which uh, yeah. I'm not sure whether they were covered there on that video, right? So I would I like. Think, uh, this will cover this though. Okay. All right. So yeah. So there is a um, there is a video that we can play later on, but I think you know some of these questions perhaps could be. Respondent live here, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's totally fine. Totally fine. Great, so what time is it there now? So, which ones are, are much interesting and, uh, well, maybe we'll have some additional questions? Cool, alright, so can you guys um, start with the ones that you've <laughs> you said to cross? Yeah, uh, I have two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, so. We have Giovanni here, and he's going to ask you a few questions. Can you see okay. him? Yeah, just a sec. Yeah. Okay, so basically I'm a uh, bit from darkness from the, from the forum, or Giovanni, and the e playground auto. So, yeah, uh, great. We, we had some, some, some chat some, some years ago, if you remember. And yeah, basically, I, I just started um, 
playing around with the playing, playing with the version two of the framework. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, one of the biggest like steps for me to get used to it was actually composer. That is not strictly related, but with the framework itself, but is now um, very deeply integrated in it. So it's uh, very important. Yeah, yeah part of it and I think that that's great because I'm now starting to understand how it works and uh, everything and I, I like it because it solves a lot of problems that you have for example for the extensions and and so on in, uh, in the previous versions in the previous version and uh, so I, I, the only thing I want to, to ask you about is um, about this particular thing is if um, you think about that now the, the that the learning in general? Sorry? About the composer in general? No, well, um, about the, the integration with composer inside of, of E2. If, if you think yeah. that uh, that's it's adding more complexity, so it's making the, the learning cu curve more steeper, or that it can be something that like kind of prevents some, some people of um, start adapting, start using E framework or yeah, actually, Composer writes a minimal requirement, minimum uh, requirement of skills. I mean, it requires a uh, command line, it requires some uh, additional environment settings. Yeah, that's all true, but uh, unfortunately, Composer is a uh, very strict tool. So either you're using it or you're not using it. There's no other option. Yeah. So uh, since everyone you know, we went Composer, and since uh, there are more and more great packages out there, we decided just to use it. Yep. And for the first time, I think I wasn't really sure about it, but uh, well, I've started using it myself, and uh, now I can actually say that it's, it's a great tool, and uh, it was a great decision. As for extensions, it's a bit tricky, but I think it's just because of a bit lack of docs, apparently, for E2, for prison extensions. Sorry, and sorry, the sorry. guide that uh, is uh, there now is kind of covered in this component thing as well. And we're going to have a, a template for an extension that will uh, cover development mode. So it will, uh, it will be uh, able to load classes when you're developing it, and uh, at the time you don't have a uh, composer. So why when you don't have the package yet? So it's uh, for development mode. So, so basically when you, you don't have the app package yet? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because yeah, that will still be able to outload it. Ah, cool, because that was another question in fact that I had was exactly answering my question because I asked what's the best way to create an extension with its own assets without using Composer or, or how is the auto-loading handled in, in that case and then related to the, this question I have another one that's probably uh, still yeah, yeah. Well, you can do the hard way so you, you can not use Composer at all okay. uh, so in order for you to load uh, classes it, it should define a root LS for classes so you should map a root namespace to some kind of a directory. If you have mapped it, uh, it can load the uh, classes, but uh, it's not a good way actually to do it, since we have Composer, since uh, it's package should be installed. Mm -hmm. cool. but, uh, and so basically now, the, the way it's working is uh, using the PSR4, right? So that, that even, if, if, even if you're not using, like, it, let, let's say that you're you're creating a new extension and it's not yet on 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 a Git repository or on packages. So, what was where should you place it in, in the first place to, to start develop, developing? Well, well you're, uh, currently it's not merged yet, but uh, there's a pull request that that's a template for a G to create an extension. So it will create a directory for you, it will add all the autoload for you, so you, you don't just basically don't have to care about it. Great, okay. So uh, yeah, we have a few more questions. Um, but uh, naturally we have people here that are uh, and actually people here who are not as experienced as Giovanni. Right? So 
it would be good for you to perhaps you know, give us a little bit of an overview of the framework and most importantly, why do you think that people should adopt it now since we have all sorts of other frameworks out there, Zend, Laravel and so forth. So why should people yeah, go, yeah. go for E uh, instead of the others? Frameworks. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, most of these frameworks are very good, uh, else uh, this won't be used at all. And uh, I can name a few types of frameworks. So there are micro frameworks, like uh, for example, Silex or Fedfree. These are absolutely raw core, and you can uh, add packages as you need. Um, some frameworks are like uh, certain libraries, like Xamarin or Aura, and some, uh, some frameworks are well, um, they are trying to reach out. So lots of layers, lots of complexity, total flexibility, but uh, most of the time it's a bit too much. That's Symfony and Proposal Tool. Yeah, so the key is all about balance. So we just check what's really required to build the medium size uh, web application and what, what will be enough, extensible enough to build the large scale applications and implement it. So um, when we have uh, pre development, uh, we have um, not that uh, bad learning curve. It's actually uh, for E1 plus, I think it's better than uh, Symphony or Zen, so it's a uh, much easier to learn. So when uh, getting new development, Yeah, they we were not to really about uh, um, design patterns or uh, this stuff. So yeah, we know all these design patterns. We are using all these design patterns, but uh, we are not emphasizing on these. So we're not uh, saying people that we have a lot of dependency injection. You should inject these uh, abstract factors here and here and here. But instead, we are just using it and uh, well. Hiding all the complex stuff uh, in our API. So people will uh, actually do the job instead of uh, digging into design patterns and decide which one to use this time. So we are more uh, practice oriented. Okay, and that's great. Right. Some features I think we're kind of um, complete. So we have um, all the stuff uh, I think any modern framework has. Well, as for unique stuff, it's uh, home generation. I think we're, maybe now we're not the only framework that uh, uses uh, generation from the browser, but uh, we were well, that's what we created this people. Okay, can I, can I just stop you a little bit there? Because uh, the audio that's coming in, um, it's not coming with a very good uh, quality, so um, I'll try to hang up and call you again to see whether the connection will improve and we can understand mm -hmm. you better. Okay, okay. Yeah, we might uh, have to do that. So yeah, sorry I interrupted you there. So if you would like to conclude your thoughts on that um, question, please. Uh, well, um, uh, the conclusion is that Y is a framework for people who prefer practice to theory and uh, balance of simplicity and uh, features to complexity. That's great. Yeah. So if you, if you if you like this balance, then it may be for you. Try it. And if it fits that, that's it. Great, why well, not <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> Great, so uh, we do have a list of other questions that were answered on the video.
but uh, I believe that perhaps you know you you know the, the public here might have some additional questions that uh, were not said. So anything? Yeah, I've got um, an additional one. A small uh, okay, generic. Sorry. Can you just introduce yourself? Yes, myself. Um, I'm Mattel, um, lead, de uh, lead developer for uh, an agency here in London. Um, your, your IRC name. <laughs> um, my, my IRC name is uh, The Peach, uh, <laughs> as the fruit. Uh, not be confused with anything else. Uh, <laughs> I'm a co worker with Giovanni, actually. So I had the opportunity to, to dig into um, E2 and uh, E play, uh, Playground a little bit. Uh, but my question is a little bit more generic. Uh, I tend to, to see things from a wider perspective. Um, so I wonder what's your opinion, uh, um, first of all, regarding Composer, specifically on uh, uh, this approach of Composer, which, in my personal opinion, seems like more in line to what other languages are doing, for instance, Ruby or uh, whatever else, um, for, for managing uh, uh, packages. Uh, and on a wider instead perspective, instead, what do you think about uh, the direction PHP is taking compared to where we are coming from? Oh, that is horrible. Okay. <laughs> well, I have quite like what well, the Ruby has in terms of uh, package management, but it's not because of uh, the way they manage packages, but uh, because it's the only package manager for Ruby. So the good thing is that they have all their packages and all their libraries available through the through a single uh, package management. And I think we are actually coming to the point where all the PHP code and well, at least most of the PHP code will be available through Composer. At least, um, well, currently, I think Symfony is dropping uh, peer packages. Mm -hmm. And lots of people are uh, dropping peer packages as well. So okay. peer will die in uh, in a year or two, and uh, we'll have a composer, oh, a single package <laughs> for PHP. Yeah, for peer or like Because uh, it requires you to put your code on uh, something like GitHub or Bitbucket, and GitHub and Bitbucket are very collaborative tools. Yeah. So it encourages uh, people to collaborate, it encourages people to actually review this code and to improve it. So overall code quality should be better and better. Yeah, makes sense. Good, thank you. Good. So from the public, more questions? Do we have anything else that you guys want to uh, I think I have a question. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, uh, this is Ganesh, yeah? Uh, first of all, thanks for developing such a great framework. Um, when we started, uh, my, my question is about the uh, uh, asset loading, like asset managers in E. Uh, when E started, uh, the front end was pretty basic. You had jQuery library and jQuery UI, which uh, took care of like most of the front end stuff. Uh, yeah. But I think over the past two years, uh, the front end has uh, grown like drastically. Uh, you have you have a lot of uh, front end MVC frameworks come um, coming into play. Uh, do you, do you think it would be good to use E just for the back end and use like a, uh, a different framework for the front end? And uh, in, in the future development of E, um, do you think that asset manager wouldn't play uh, an important role as it plays right now? Oh, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, it is true that uh, currently there are some uh, very advanced uh, uh, UI libraries, so all this handler and all this stuff that are actually do not require you to generate lots of uh, front end code, uh, framework wise. It, it communicates with the back end via JSON, mm -hmm. sending data here and there, and receiving it and rendering it itself. Uh, but I still think that uh, E is a very good tool for the back end. Because uh, currently we are developing uh, API for Android and iOS plans and actually serving uh, lots of JS requests uh, through E and it's very, very convenient. Because of vector record, because of uh, validation, mm -hmm. and uh, well, the way it can 
MMP transform to JSON responses instead of forms and uh, HTML. So yeah, I think it's uh, very convenient to use E for this. Uh, and uh, as a package management, um, currently there are two ways to do package management. First is you can use uh, yeast package management. Um, it has its pros, uh, and uh, well, if you have uh, complex pages where you're loading uh, one set of scripts in uh, one page and another set of scripts to another page, and uh, you have some dependencies, it's a perfect tool for the job. If it's uh, something more dynamic, like uh, one page application that loads once and then uh, loads more and more scripts, then probably a uh, choice of uh, client-side package management like Boar or something like G, this handy is uh, better, actually better. Yeah, nice. Okay, that's great. Yeah, thank you for that. More questions from you guys? Release state? Right, yes. <laughs> Very important one here that I'm sure you expected already to uh, Gregory. Um, did you hear that? I wonder whether you think anything you're likely to release. Two. Uh, oh, when, when is the release? <laughs> yeah, it's a tricky question, and uh, of course I expected it. So I've uh, contacted John and uh, get an estimate from him. So he says uh, that probably if everything will go uh, in the right way, in the best possible way, we will have a beta in a month, and then uh, we'll have uh, like two months to polish it and uh, make a general available release. So that's best estimate, but it's, it can be can be much worse because of uh, we're not working on the full time, none of us. And well, I hope we will at some point, but uh, currently we're all having uh, full time jobs. Gosh. And it all depends on how we are loaded on the full-time jobs and uh, how life goes. Thank you. Got it. So yeah, just a, a question connected to that. So is Kion a real person? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I tried to get a hold of Kion, and uh, yes, it's uh, only through email. <laughs> Right, so we were just wondering whether he was a real person or maybe a robot. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, he's a real person who is in the US and works on actually many, many things besides uh, he can work. Ah, okay. Oh, that's, that's great. Okay. Any additional questions from you guys? All right. So what I think we're going to do here is then thank you for your time there. I know that it's a... About time that you just uh, have a, a look at what's happening in Sochi now <laughs> with the Winter Olympics, right? Yeah. So uh, we're just going to um, thank you for your time there. We, I'm, I'm going to ask you to um, um, actually, if I can, share the video that you recorded with all of these guys here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I'm going to list all the questions that I put across. So then. You know, now they're having a beer and having some uh, snacks here, but then at home they can look at uh, that video, can watch that video in a bit more detail and understand things, etc. And hopefully we'll have even more questions for you for next month. Yeah, I'm glad uh, to answer. Perfect. All right, so. Yeah, it was pretty great to see you all and well. Watch the video and have a beer. Have a good night. Alright, thank you Bye. very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.